All right, guys, welcome back to Rome Reviews. I'm Rome, and today I wanted to get back on here and talk about HyperOS 3 and my experience with it so far. And you guys know how I start my videos. I like to be honest with you. So out of the gate, HyperOS is going to suffer from the same issue that I talked about with Origin OS 6 when you go from 5 to 6, where the differences are not as big as you thought they would be. Um, and I'll show you what I mean in a moment, but just going in, I just want to make everybody aware that it's not going to be a huge difference. Uh, HyperOS, just like many of the other phones that upgraded from 15 to 16, um, they made a lot of improvements in the background as far as like just uh, smoothness of the software and stuff like that. Many people won't notice, uh, to the naked eye, many people won't notice. I mean, I feel like Android 15 towards the end of his uh, life. I, I, I can't say for the early, uh, the, you know, the early stages of Android 15, but for six, Android 15 and a later before it started transitioning to 16 was fairly smooth to me. But um, going in, this is smooth. I'll show you what I am experiencing with Hyper OS 3 and what I really wish they would add to Hyper OS 3. So, all right, let's go ahead and jump over to the overhead. And you'll see, I just like to show that I am using HyperOS 3 on a couple of different devices, using on the 15 Ultra and the 17 Pro Max. Um, very similar. I mean, I mean, exact same experience. And I'll show you that they're even though they're on slightly different versions, there's nothing noticeably different between the two. Just want to show you guys I am actually using it between the two different phones. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. So First things first, um, I really want them to change. I, I want them to put a button in here that says update. Um, when I first started experiencing uh, uh, HyperOS period, I could not figure out how to uh, check for an update. I always had to go in and, and type in, um, I think it was update, uh, automatic system updates, uh, system update, and it would take me in and search. So I, someone commented on one of my earlier videos with uh, the Xiaomi um, 15 Ultra, and they told me how to do it. You just go into my device and hit update. And I just want to share that with as many people as possible, uh, just in case it's not as obvious to other people like it was with me. But anyway, moving on. Here's going to be my one of my bigger gripes with uh, HyperOS. Um, I get their history and what they're doing and how they want to mirror Apple is a sign of respect or whatever, whatever that reason may be. Um, I'm going to say it's too much like Apple, but uh, my biggest gripe is going to be when you go to personalization and I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I'm going to talk about the themes and stuff like that as well, but icons, I got to talk about this because it kind of, it kind of bothers me. So while I have this up here, the icon screen needs work. Uh, it shows you how your icons look really big here and that's it. You can't really edit them here. You gotta go in a level deeper and you have to choose from the very limited supply icons that you have here. Now these, I believe that some of these I downloaded if I'm not mistaken. It's been a little while since I played with the icons on here because it's just so lacking. You have to go download icons. One of the things I really wish they would add on here is like the the ones that pull colors from your, uh, the color matching icons like uh, many of the other phone makers uh, have on their color OS, Oxygen OS, Vivo, even Vivo does, even though it's limited to the native apps. This one doesn't have them at all from what I can tell. Now, if someone knows how to apply them and I just haven't found it, please feel free to drop a comment down below. I would really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I just, I mean, they have a few options here, but you, you have to go in and download more. Now they do have free packs and stuff like that. And they're actually free. You don't have to do any additional work to get them. Click on them, download them, apply them. And I really appreciate that. That's cool. But the, I, I really would love them to put some type of, um, skin on the icons that you could just apply and it pulls the color from the wallpaper. That would be really nice. So Shout me if <laughs> I'm not nearly big enough as a YouTuber, but if anybody stumbles across this from Xiaomi, please, we we need those uh, icons 
uh, to do the color match with, your, with the wallpaper. And other than that, like I said, it's just really limited. You can go in and apply icons, don't get me wrong. And that's fairly simple, but this screen honestly feels like a waste. I mean, you could size your icons up and down, but it just seems like a waste of space. Uh, they could just pull those styles in and just drop them down below and keep it all on one screen. Um, it just seems like a waste. All right, guys, just wanted to cut away from today's video for just a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Borderlands. They sent me this keyboard cleaning kit to review and with no specific criteria, so I can be honest with you guys about it. So I have really grown fond of this thing. First, I looked at it, I was like, huh, this is interesting. Like, what I was going on here? But anyway, it's really simple to use, actually. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> no instructions needed or anything like this. You have your little brush here to clean between your keys. And you can just hide that away really easily and slide this drawer open. And you have a bunch of little accessories here. You have your spray for your, your screens. And I'll use that in just a moment to show you how that works. I mean, it's really simple. You have your little mini brush here. Really cool, really simple. And you, I, I, I don't know the official names of each of these accessories, but you have your little, I call it a lens cleaner because you can use it on your individual lenses and it's really soft. So you don't have to worry about scratching them or anything. And you can clean those fingerprints off of there really nicely. If you don't have anything around like a, a microfiber cloth or anything, you have this right here easily accessible, especially since I carry this with me all the time, it's protected. So nice, always a hand. And you have your little cleaner here where you can clean dirt out of little tight uh, tight areas. Like if I use it inside a USB-C port, you just have to be real careful so you don't damage your port. Or you can use them on headphones and stuff like that. I really like what they've done here. Just put everything in a little one spot, easy to reach. Always, can, uh, always with you with this little carrying case. And the last little piece, well, one of the last pieces I'll talk about is this little... I call it a little <laughs> microphone or whatever, but it's not that. But you can just clean those tight little areas. And once again, it's soft, so you don't have to worry about scratching anything. Clean dust out of tight areas. Like, hopefully I can let the, that shows up well. But just clean out little areas like that. And, and even with like little headphone cases and stuff like that, you can get in there. Really neat, really nice. And they have these little thicker areas on each one of these pieces that you can hold where you don't feel like you'll drop it. I mean, they, they really thought this through, so I really got to show appreciation for that. I'm going to set that to the side for a moment because I'm about to use it. And with this little piece right here, a little soft but larger uh, surface area that you could use to wipe devices off. Like if you have like a ton of fingerprints on your screen, pop that top off of there, spray. Boom. Set that off to the side. And wipe and clean the device like super easily like i mean come on they really thought this through i really like this this is good so i keep this thing with me at all times because i hate fingerprints and stuff like that so and dust and things of that nature so shout out to auto ends really appreciate them sponsoring me being willing to send me out a little device to review really cool so all right, with that being said, check them out. There should be links in the description. And like I said, this is a fairly cheap uh, kit right here. Just, I mean, nice all around, really well thought out. So check them out, links in the description. And let's get back to the video. Um, And let's go ahead and jump into <sighs> navigating Xiaomi uh, Hyper OS is it's just weird to me. It just, it just feels like a lot of separation that's not needed. Um, when you go into always on display, um, you get the full screen um, always on display. And that's cool. Nothing wrong there. No gripes. Uh, I just like how to separate it. I like how some of the other... Uh, Companies do their thing where you can go in and you can navigate between the lock screen, like like here, but you can't edit always on display here. You can do lock screen and home screen and always on display be separate. I kind of like how they put always on display to the left of this screen and you can edit it all in here. Um, that would be cool. That would be cool. I just, I want the OS to flow better than what it does at the moment. It's not bad by any means. I mean, it's it's 
really smooth. I mean, everything works very well. It just, I want the menus to flow a little better than they do. Um, there is no, I want to say there's no, uh, what am I looking for? As much as they copy Apple, I was, I was expecting them to have more of that glass, um, what am I looking for? I forgot, what, whatever, liquid glass or whatever Apple calls it. Uh, they don't, which I'm not mad at. I, I, I've said that before in a previous video. I'm not mad at that by any means. Not like I miss it. But for those out there that may be looking for it, I have yet to find it. Even though, to be honest, I'm not, I'm, I haven't looked hard for it just simply because I don't care for it. Um, if I have it, cool. If I don't, I don't. Ah, it's fine. Um, let's go out of there. Other than that, the OS, like I said, um, <laughs> you won't be, if, if you're watching this and you're looking at a Xiaomi phone and you're like, oh, I don't know about Hyper OS, you won't be missing anything. Now, I can't speak for the global version because I don't, both of these are the Chinese version, so I can't speak for that. But I did have someone mention in one of my previous videos that uh, Hyper OS does have Android Auto. I have yet to find it um, on this device. On it. Now, I know that if you get the global version, you'll probably have it. But when I search Android Auto, nothing comes up. It brings back a few options here to look through. But there is no Android Auto present on this device. And I can tell you, unless someone knows a secret that I don't know, it's just it's not here. So just be aware of that. Otherwise, HyperOS 3 is extremely similar to the previous HyperOS um, 2. There's nothing crazy here that there was that was added. Um, your themes, I mean, they're nice. You could pick a theme and then apply the wallpaper to it and it'll kind of do the, the depth feature where the, the person or item, whatever is in, inside the wallpaper will cut out around your clock. Um, it has the nice animation to where you don't have to add any additional uh, apps to do live wallpapers or anything. You just pick them and apply them. Really cool. No complaints there. Like I said, HyperOS is nice. I just feel like it's, um, it, needs a, it needs more refinement. Uh, it needs to add, they need to add some more features to it to make it feel different from the previous version. Like I said, they've, I mean, they've done some work with the app animation where you can click in and out of apps really quickly. I'm not good at this at all. So please forgive me. Like, I mean, I, for those that play with their apps like that, I guess that's cool. <laughs> like, I guess. But for me, I, I mean, it seems very similar to the previous version of HyperOS. So no major changes. If you were nervous about getting the phone because of HyperOS or anything like that, or the upgrade may have neg negatively impacted the performance of the uh, phone. It hasn't. This thing still performs beautifully, still takes beautiful pictures, still great with battery life. Uh, no hiccups when you're navigating through the phone. No, it doesn't get hung up or anything. So don't be afraid. You can go ahead and grab one. Uh, just be aware of those things. Uh, no Android Auto for those that care. I, I use Android Auto a lot, but I know some people don't care. But anyway, really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Feel free to like and subscribe. It all goes a long way. And stay tuned for more videos like this. All right, I'll catch you later.